So today we have another custom PC build. It has taken years, but my wife is finally into PC gaming. And what did it was VR. So today we're going to replace her crappy little pre-built system with this. We've got a Radian 5700, a 600 watt Thermaltake power supply, a Western Digital Blue 1 terabyte, 256 gigabytes NVMe drive, 16 gigabytes of DDR4-2666 memory, a Ryzen 5 3600, an MSI B450 gaming motherboard, five of these cheap little fans from Amazon, but they're RGB and they'll do the job, and we're going to stick it all inside this NZXT H510. Let's get to it. So this will be Megan's first computer build, but she has seen me build quite a few computers. So we're going to do this kind of different, and I'm going to see how far she can get without my help, actually. So uh, let's get started. You know to start with the motherboard, of course. So uh, what's first? All right, so what do you know about that part? This is a processor. And it goes in there. It does. And don't grab it by the gold things. Yes, you have to be very <laughs> delicate with these. I know that much. Yes. Wouldn't want this thing to catch on fire or something, you know. And the arrow. The arrow. Look at this. You already know what you're doing. You don't even need me here. Yes. That arrow lines up with that arrow. We seem to have come to the first problem. Megan? Yeah. The processor is upside down. <laughs> the pins have to go in the holes. Those little spiky bits. Yeah. So line the arrow up. Yeah. This way, sort of. You were doing so well. Just give it a little jiggle. Make sure it's in there all the way. All right, what's next? This fan. So what's the point of that thing? It's to keep heat out. Get rid of the heat. Yeah. Make sure you don't put that face down on the table or anything because it's got uh, thermal paste ready on. Now, put that down with the fan facing down. These have to come out. Yes. Because this is not a Ryzen 9 processor with the Spire cooler, you're going to have to take off these. So now you got your heat sink there. And place that on. Line it up with those screws. Looking good. All right, so you got your screws in. What's next? Next, we gotta plug in the fan. Yeah, the fan header's down there somewhere. Yeah. All right, let's hide those wires. Looks pretty good. As long as it's not getting caught up inside the fan, it should be fine. All right, what's next? Next is the RAM. Yes. You've been paying attention to what I do a lot, haven't you? Yeah. Just need to build a few of these. Uh, here's the trick of art. Are you going to get the right RAM slots, though? That would be the first one and the third one. Yeah. That is correct. But do you know why that is? No. You understand if there was four, though, you'd be in all four slots, of yeah. course. 
It's because those different slots correspond to different channels. So if you have, you know, two of those memory uh, sticks in one and three, you get dual channel memory. Whereas they run in single channel if you didn't have them like that. And some of the boards, I believe this one included, won't even boot if they're in the wrong slot. Let's make sure you're down all the way. Looks like you are. Looking pretty good. All right. So, and we could have put that RAM in before the CPU cooler, but it's fine. <laughs> some coolers are far too large to do that with, but for this one in particular, it should be fine. Up next, we got what? SSD. Yes. You know where that goes? Gotta say you're handling this like a pro so far. I'm doing quite a bit better than your sister did. Although I don't think she's ever watched me build a computer. Don't make fun of Jackie. No, I'm not making fun of her. She's just never built a computer before. Yeah, she hasn't. And neither have you. I've seen this. Until now. You probably want to put that M.2 shield back on first. That's all right. They're really not necessary, to be honest. They're just supposed to be for cooling. If you look on the underside of that, there's some thermal material. It looks like uh, looks like a, a type of almost like a thermal paste, but it's it's a pad. It's a thermal pad. Okay, so it's not. <laughs> no, it's fine. I mean, it's with the speeds of current NVMe drives, it's really not necessary to have those. To be completely honest. At least, not that I've seen. Alright, so you've got most of your major components already on there, and you didn't even really need me. What am I here for? <laughs> uh, you got your RAM, you got your, your cooler, and your CPU, and you got your M.2. Uh, do you know what's next? You gotta go in the case. Gotta go in the case. You gotta have somewhere to put this thing. Along with the fans and the video card. Alright, so you got your pretty white case here. Uh, how do we get this panel off? I gotta unscrew this. Yeah. All cases are kind of different, but these NZXT cases are pretty cool, especially the H510. It's just like these little nubs holding in the case. Just lift it straight up, and it should just pop right out. It's okay, you're not going to break it, probably. And it's just a nice little glass panel. Alright, now let's take off the back panel so we can actually get to our hardware that's included with this case. So we can actually install our motherboard. And then out like that. There you go. And now we have our case fully open. So now, if you want to grab the hardware box that's down inside of there. Well, I have a lot of good things to say about this case. I also absolutely despise the way they designed this hard drive tray. So, if you want to go ahead and grab all that out of there. As great as this case is, I have my issues with it. For one, is this, this drive cage here. It's... It's fine, at least it's removable, and then you can put your drives in it, but I much prefer systems that are toolless. You just put the drive in some kind of cage and slide it in. It's so much easier. But for now, let's take these out. So now we have our drive cage out. We can just slide this right on in here, just like that. Let's uh, give me some of those screws over there. I need four of them. I'm going to right back in here where it was. Now with our hard drive back in place in its cage, let's uh, turn this down around and insert our motherboard. We should start with inserting the I.O. shield. Alright, now let's get your motherboard in there. Just line up those holes, line up the little sockets on the motherboard. It can be a little bit of a tight fit with those fans in the way. But they come pre-installed in the case, and while we could take them out to make it slightly easier, that's kind of a pain in the ass. Get those holes lined up. Almost. There you go. No, it's not quite in yet. There it is. See the little yeah. nub right there? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Now I just gotta do all those screws. All like nine of them. 
The worst part of building computers is screws. I hate screws. All right, so now we got all your screws in and your motherboard is very stably in there. Go ahead and grab your power supply and we'll flip this around and stick that in. Get rid of all that paperwork that no one cares about. All that bubble wrap, your power cable. This is unfortunately not a modular power supply, but <laughs> they usually do. It's not modular, but it's fine for what it is. It's kind of hard to find good power supplies right now because of the pandemic. We'll line up the back of these holes down here. So unfortunately, we realized we weren't filming while we did the new fan install and the cable management on the back. The only thing left to do is what, Megan? Install a graphics card. Yes. Let's get a quick look around here. We have some nice cable management going on. Very pretty. Let's go look at that Radian 5700. It's a beautiful card. Remember, you got to take off those brackets first. You just need this to be able to go up when you put the actual graphics card in. Lift straight out. There you go. Line up the slot. There you go. Straight down. Now you got to put the screws back in, put down the little guard there, and plug in those wires. you got two pieces. It's a 8 plus 6. So you see both these are split into two 8 pins, but you only need 6 and 8. They kind of hold together, well, quite frankly, badly. And just kind of stick them in under here. You'll see a little, or you'll feel a little lip. Just match it up with that, the same way you did the giant power connector. Alright, so we're done with the build. And you've surprised me quite a lot with how well you handled this without really needing much of my help. And uh, you did it in pretty much record time. <laughs> so, if you want to do the honors, press the power button. Let's see if it actually turns on. Or if we're good to be sad and undo a bunch of cables. Uh, hey! What's think? Ooh, like gotta go for that nice plastic peel. Are we gonna get a, an image? We got MSI, and we got Windows booting. Ah, it's beautiful. So with this, Megan should be able to play some VR games other than just the stuff that's on the Quest alone. So this build comes in at just under 820 bucks. Granted, we already had some of the parts, like the RAM and the actual M.2 drive from her pre-built computer, but the rest of the parts were relatively cheap, especially the video card, which we got at Micro Center on Open Box. Thanks for watching. If you want to see my wife in more of my videos, give me a like or a comment, and uh, we'll see you next time.